And here we go. This is Flash at the Dropping a Coil show with Larry Woods and Rob Works tonight on this uh, Thursday night, the 4th of June, 2020. Okay, good. We got a good uh, got sound for me on Grimner. So, uh, yeah, I just say hello to the, uh, the bots and the bodies, and then I turn the show over to these fellows. So uh, what we got going for your chatting extravaganza this evening, the bots and bodies are, you got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chalcedoni, Dan Van Meter, Echelon, Me, Frumpy Work, Graham Z, Java Doctor 2, Meisterbrow, Prince, Rob Works, Trust Number 1, F, Vanna White, Weather Dork, the Phantom, Anti underscore Cheskura, Chloe Singular Cyborg Noodle, Eman and Siv, Gromit, Jays Nines, Jays Kiss, Matt WJ2002, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Smart Ass, and the Holiest Roger. So if you're in a chattering kind of a mood, that's where you, what you got to choose from. <laughs> and uh, we have Larry and Rob on the uh, state-of-the-art energy. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Flash. Hey, Larry, how you doing today? Super. It's a beautiful day here. Going to be 90 degrees again. Yep, about the same here. <laughs> Loving it. Well, what you know this week? Well, uh, update on Monday meeting R&D group. Um, last week, week before last, we gave them the complete, exactly schematic wiring diagrams of how to wire the coils, how to use them for MOSFETs, transistors, resistors, transformers, capacitors. And our electronics guys have the coils, the 12 circuit coil. And they started using them. Yay, finally. Uh, one of the guys came in and he says, I'm only using two circuits of the coil. And I'm not getting any readings whatsoever, uh, meter readings off of any of the other circuits. I can hold them with my fingers and I don't get shocked. But off the two circuits that I'm using, I'm putting 12 volts in and getting 300 volts out. And I said, well, you know that sometimes you've got to add a load on these coils before you get any kind of a reading. And they all said, <laughs> that doesn't work. It's, that doesn't work like that. I said, well, just put a light bulb on it. So during the meeting, one of the guys put a 20-watt light bulb on his 300 volts that he was getting out, uh -huh. uh, uh, on on one of the circuits that he wasn't getting anything from, and he even grabbed him with his hand, and there's absolutely no power. Right. But when he when he put that 20 watt load on it, the 20 watt load glowed, huh. so it wasn't wasn't doing what it needed to do, and I said, double it. So he added another light bulb. And he said, wow, they got brighter. And I said, double it again. And so he added four light bulbs. And he says, wow, they're all up to full brightness. This can't work. <laughs> so yeah, you do. guys are... Go ahead. Go ahead. So you guys that are that are using these things or are trying to make them don't believe what you've been taught in school. These right. coils do not do what what electrical formulas say that they should do. Yeah. So it's going to be real interesting as we move forward. Yeah. Somebody in chat says, Larry needs video. They want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> soon, really soon. Uh, they're 
uh, they're documenting all of their test results, and it's going to blow the socks off of everybody in the power world. Yeah, one day soon they're going to publish everything. Duh. And uh, we'll all have it. Yeah, it, it'll be out for the public. Uh, we'll sell kits or maybe even pre-wired coils for the folks that don't want to take the time to do it themselves. Uh, yeah. But in order to get them across the borders, it's going to have to be artwork. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're just selling art. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a pretty little thing with wires and stuff. Yeah, copper yeah. art. And pretty shapes. Yeah. Patterns. And it's all a five relationship for you guys that are math folks. Yeah. Uh, uh, as as the you have you have two circuits. I'll go over it again. You got two circuits. One of them uh, they're both next to one another. All the wires are flat, not crossing. One circuit goes clockwise. The circuit next to it goes anti-clockwise or counterclockwise for us Americans. And what that does is that allows the magnetic and uh, the magnetic field to flow the same direction in either positive or negative. So you can use AC or pulse on these. And next to each of these paired circuits on each side is an empty space that's as wide as both of the circuits. Right. Well, that empty space allows for the expansion of the magnetic field that's created between each of the wires and as it goes closer to the center of the of the toroidal shape, the donut, it compresses that magnetic field because that space gets more narrow. Right. That increases the magnetic field by compression. It also, as it rotates around the donut, that gives you a compression field in the ring of the donut, creating three more tornadoes, uh, toroidal shapes, that circulate in the ring of the, of the donut. Once again, increasing the magnetic field. That's why the, it, this is all magnetic induction, not electrical induction, magnetic induction. And the magnetic fields inducing into each other allow for the reduction of the resistance in the circuit. So when you add a load, you're supposed to get a voltage drop. And yeah, we get a very minute voltage drop, but what it does is it increases the amperage proportionate to the field, to the, to the load, and that amperage increase in turn increases the magnetic field. The increased magnetic field magnetically reduces the resistance of the wire. Don't say it's garbage because that's how they're doing it with superconductors in the computers. Uh -huh. So we're doing all this at room temperature. And it's simply the geometry of the coil. When we talked to Marco Roden many years ago after we made our first designs, he looked at our designs and he said, finally somebody understands. These are not Poe coils, they're not Daniel Nunez coils. These are actual vortex math coils that uses the math properly. Right. Well, I think about it all the time. I just, I am so excited to see the, the you know, the real production thing. Well, if they don't kill us, it'll, it'll be something yeah, good. Yeah, that's that's my worry. Is it's, or is it going to be in time? Yeah, the the R and D department that I'm with is worldwide, so I don't think that. Even if they start killing us off, I don't think they'll get all of us. Right. So, Larry? Yes? 
Can I use that vortex math coils to define your coil on the links, you know, on the uh, notes? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just wasn't positive if you were just using it as a term or if it's actually what you're calling this. The new coil is the vortex math coil. You can refer to it as that. It's it's based on vortex math. It's based okay. on the Fibonacci sequence. It's mm -hmm. based on Solomon's Temple. It's based on pyramid math. Uh, well, I just math. Take, I just take the note serious. Don't want to put something down that doesn't match what you're talking about. Yeah. Just checking in. Thanks. Yeah, and vortex math was the first new kind of math that I learned from my partner that uh, sort of opened my eyes to what could be done. And then pyramid math verifies it. Solomon math verifies it. The Fibonacci sequence verifies it. Nature verifies it. And there's pictures of it in the Anunnaki stone reliefs. So it, it it's nothing new. Yeah, I just it's rediscovered old technology. Yeah, and because of my background in electricity, I understand some of the hazards and some of the safety methods, and a lot of the guys that are doing it don't have any electrical background, and they're missing some of the most important steps. Like you can't cross your wires. That collapses the magnetic field. Your wires have to be next to one another like your fingers when you hold your hand out. Your fingers don't cross. Nothing in nature crosses like that. So keep your wires straight. Don't let them cross. And that allows each wire magnetically and electrically to induce and uh, interact with each of the fields, both the electric field and the magnetic field. And the empty spaces allow for the magnetic field to expand to its maximum potential. Well, it expands and contracts. So it's an expansion yeah. contraction, yeah. just like that's the nature of, so they say, the nature of the universe. Yeah, yeah it's breathing. Right. It's a and, pulse. and everything yeah, is on, right. on, off. You've got two circuits together that's on, on, and the empty space that's off. So right. just like nature, it's on, on, off, on, on, off, all the way around the coil. Yeah. Well, actually, in verse, so you got like more like right, left, off. Yeah. Oh. Same as a it's wave, off, as you would look at it on a, on a oscilloscope. You got up, down, back to neutral. Yep. Anyways, yeah, that's all. And, and the, these coils produce clean power. By that, I mean voltage and amperage start at the same time. Yeah. And that gives you 100% power factor. You don't have to be 90 degrees out to get something to work. Right. And there's no spikes or anything. No spikes at all. At, it, most of the people that are doing coil research are getting great big spikes, and their whole deal is capture the spike. Well, that's dirty power. So don't capture the spike. Eliminate the spike. And the spike only gives you a few milliamps at high voltage anyway, which is unuseful. You can you can light a few LEDs with it, but that's all. You can't use it to power a house. You can't use it to power a car. Right. No, this is something totally different than that. Absolutely. Now, shifting gears, I wanted to ask you something about um, something else. Well, it goes back to the calls. Now, yeah, I'll just start with that. Um, you have said that uh, you can generate heat with these coils. Yeah. Yeah, the high magnetic field, if you put an iron rod into the vortex, it'll glow red. It'll heat up. We can, we can make an induction furnace out of these things. 
That's what I was wanting to get to. Cause but the the coil itself only heats up to uh, after after thirty minutes. A coil that normally burned up and started a fire in three and a half minutes only generated 120 degrees. And after 45 minutes, it was still at that 120 degrees Fahrenheit, right. not centigrade Fahrenheit. And it's got 200 degree insulation on it. Right. So you can run it all day without it burning up. And the, the MOSFETs and the diodes and all the capacitors and everything in the electronic circuits that are trying to catch the bad spikes, you can only run them for four or five minutes before the MOSFET burns out because it's overheats. Mm -hmm. So with, with the wiring of a nine circuit coil or, or nine of the circuits out of a 12 circuit coil, you can replace a MOSFET that, and their air core. That means that you can switch them as fast as you want. You can do anything that you want to with them, and they won't burn up due to heat. They won't burn up due to fast switching. There's nothing to go wrong. I'm well, cheap. I'm I don't want to have to replace anything. Yeah, well, I'm thinking big. I'm thinking in terms of uh, manufacturing. And actual furnace, you know, actual melting steel. I mean, I can say you can put a rod through in this thing and it'll glow red, but can we melt steel? How can we melt steel with it? Increase the amperage. Put a load on the other end of it. Yeah, okay. Practically, how can we do that, though? Uh, not talking about power-wise. I'm talking about physically. How can we... Melt steel with one of these things without burning okay. it. Okay, run your <laughs> run your company off the coil, and the rod will melt. Give it a big load to increase the amperage draw, to increase not the draw, the amperage output. That stuff melts. When when he added when he kept doubling the load on these things. It didn't draw more power off the 12 volt battery that he was feeding it with. Yeah. So they asked for yeah, more load up to their maximum capabilities. Yeah. Did he keep uh, increasing the load to to where it's? He it's he ran out of light bulbs. He was, he was going to go get some more light bulbs and sockets to put them in to, for this yeah. week. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever uh, played around with Fresno lenses? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a big magnifying lens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd they're, burn. They're I'd start they're... my fires with them and stuff. Yeah. I'm just thinking of ways that, you know, we can get off of the, you know, gas and petroleum-based uh, manufacturing. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, build a passive solar system to heat your water. Don't make electricity with it. That's stupid. Yeah. Make a passive solar system to heat your water. Right. Or, or use a coil for an instant heat on your water system. Just yeah. insert the rod when you want to when you want it to get hot, right? Or just have the rod running through it and, and power it when you want it to get hot. Yeah, yeah. Or the, have your uh, a copper pipe would work. Yeah, copper pipe would work. It will induce a charge into the copper pipe magnetically. When you put it in the vortex. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it would take some tuning to, to get the right uh, parameters and everything to, to make it work. Yeah, it'll all take a little bit of experimentation to find out what works best. Yeah. But it's all easy, and it, it all follows the same basic concept. You're increasing a magnetic field. Yeah. It, it, from from a standard toroidal coil that's eight inches, 
with an iron core, a, a laminated iron core, that's rated for 1,500 milliamps, that with 100 feet of 22-gauge wire on it will start a fire in three and a half minutes at three volts. Hmm. So we put three volts through our coil, get 30 amps out of it, and it only heats up to 120 degrees. Yeah. Sounds like magic. It's uh, like 120 degrees would melt my skin. <laughs> it, it, no, it's not that hot. Uh, the, the electronics guy that finally used the coil, he said, I'm going to have to give up all of my degrees because nothing I've learned fits. And, and that's right. You've got to unlearn what you learned in school to understand what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I understand that part. Is I don't use the stuff I learned in school very often, so I probably don't even know it. Well, you're ahead of the game there because you don't have to it. unlearn anything. You're just learning. Yeah, yeah. I'm just following along. You're not yeah, having but, to wait. fight years of uh, indoctrination. Okay, but he says 120 degrees isn't hot, and I think, whoa. Yeah, well, I was in the right. desert. I mean, you know, relatively I speaking, compared to, you know, you don't want to put your hand on it. <laughs> well, I'm not one of you on guys. Of time, you can touch it. 120 degrees. My water heater is set at 125 degrees. But, see, this is the reason that electricians get treated like gods in uh, building sites and buildings. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as an ex-helper of a licensed guy, I... Man, people treated me really good. Thought I knew a bunch of shit I didn't know. I was just with him. <laughs> yeah, you're, you don't I want to talk to an electrician because they can hear you from afar. <laughs> yeah, but they just they assume that if you're willing to go start messing with all this live electricity, <laughs> that you know exactly what you're doing. And sometimes I didn't. Actually but I see him do it. So that conduit that, that guy's holding right up for there. <laughs> Yeah, but I would do crazy shit like I'd plug the lights while they're hot. And instead of shutting everything off, I eh, just leave it off. Pull the light. <laughs> it seemed like like magic to the people that never that didn't know. There's a way to do it right. Yeah, yeah. There's and the there's process. there's protections that you can you know, that are available for your safety. But man, electric, what a world! Thanks, guys. I just had to throw in my two cents. Well, you don't have to sit in the background. We're just talking. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he was they going were... into, uh, the, I called it these vortex math coils. Yeah. Produce clean power. No spikes at all. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, well, how, well, okay. So, I see, that's what I mean. I'm learning. You've got a name for it. Now we can identify the coil. It's got a name now. Well, that's just for the moment, the coil, and he, then he has several coils within that category. They're all yeah. vortex math coils, but there's you know ones for generating power, ones for uh, generating uh, propulsion uh, for heat. Well, the all reading the word is way he was naming off the vortex and capacitors and all that. Right, but reading it and hearing it are two different. Right. So, yeah. Ways of communication. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I'm just trying to make notes that right, make sense down. and could refer back to them and go, oh, that's yeah. what we spoke about. Yeah. The, the yeah. way they make a capacitor is shorting a circuit out, tying both ends of that circuit together. Uh, it, takes, it takes two circuits to make a capacitor, but you short both ends of each one of them together for a direct short, and then you take that one wire off of each of the coils, off of, yeah, off of each of the circuits, and that is the capacitive circuit. Huh. And you can't burn that out. You can't blow that capacitor up by shooting too much voltage to it. Why is that? And it, why? Mm-hmm. Because it, it's not a physical capacitor with two dissimilar metals. It's air-gapped. It's air-gapped, yeah. Okay. 
which also means that it charges and discharges instantaneously. If you want it to discharge slowly, you put three circuits together and use it like a transistor. You're beyond my understanding already. <laughs> uh, it, it's all easy stuff. It's just yeah. a matter of what yeah, wires you put electric together. Electrical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but for for people with an electrical background, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you were if you were used to this, it wouldn't be. Yeah, well, of course. if you understood all your basic terminologies and everything, and, you know. Well, that's why I try to put the links that you guys use for the show. I try to put them in the notes so that people want to know what exactly and learn. Be yeah. there. Yeah, that's that's half the half the, the work of learning any kind of. Uh, Profession is. Uh, yeah, I added a line to the show. You know. We're gonna, I'm going to use it every week. That math links are available in past shows, so I don't have to post it over and over. Yeah, maybe get uh, yeah, good idea. Good. Yeah, or maybe we could do a con, like a conglomeration of all the links and just post them as one like a special episode that doesn't have any uh, real radio to it. Yeah, I I. I post things on my Facebook page, Limitless Energy Technologies, that if you go back a year, you can read all the articles, look at all the science that I provided, and generally it will explain everything that I talk about. I've, I've given the information over and over and over again on that site. Yeah. That anybody that would just go through it all, you'd know more than I do. Yeah, somebody with a Facebook account needs to go in there and do that, go back a year, and then pull stuff out. So and that's not to your out. name, that's to limit, Limitless Energy Technologies on Facebook. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, if somebody with a Facebook account could go in there and extrapolate all that. You wow. Know, pull, that, pull that out from all the other uh, daily postings and all that. Yeah, now, there's, there's I, I only post science on that page. Uh, my personal Facebook page is full of garbage, uh, anti-everything. Yeah. Because they all suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think we could find a volunteer to, to give you a hand to that translation because the information is necessary. Yeah, yeah, just just go in and go back a year on the timeline there, and then just work your way forward, pull everything out and that's uh, pertaining to. Uh, well, with with everybody here. home, I, I guess we can find somebody to do it. <laughs> If, if you want to get a, if you want to get a good understanding of how Lee Scalman did his work, go to the Daniel Davis Manual of Magnetism, written in 1842, which has been posted several times. Yeah, I'm sure it's in one of the show links. That's why I added that map links are available. Ah, I'm so smart sometimes. <laughs> Slap myself on the back here. Well, you guys are making me feel like a Dummy, I swear. No, you well, have a bunch of knowledge that I don't. Everybody's got a lot of oh, knowledge I'm, that I don't. I just, I just want to know what everybody else knows. Yeah, yeah. you don't have enough life for that. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be God, do you? <laughs> oh, I surprised the, uh, all of the I knowledge would be God, God, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. But I surprised the local by knowing how this town got uh, started, what its claim to fame is. It's history. Yeah, they made cannonballs. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, well, I, I lived next door to a guy that was born here. So mm -hmm. when I met him, he was real quick to give me a little rundown and show me the place. Yeah, cool. Explain to me where I was, because he knew I was from somewhere else. 
making a spear is one of the most difficult projects that there is. But they don't do it anymore, but that was yeah. in the day, and that was a specialty. It's hard to make a, a perfectly round metal ball. <laughs> oh, they're doing a pretty good job right now. Man. You know how bearings are made? How bear, how they're made? No. Yeah. I do not. bearings? Mm -mm. Look into it. It's true. But uh, isn't that the Bush family that, that was making bearings during the war? <laughs> they're dripped, possibly. Yeah, they drop really? them. Really? They drop them in the air and when they're hot and uh, a certain, in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And uh, they cool in the air. And then, so that they're perfectly round. Anyway, look into it. Yeah, it's fascinating how it's done. Yeah, it One is. of those the YouTube How It's Done videos that went around. I think it was posted in the chat room a long time ago. Hmm. So I've seen it. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, man, uh, the chat rooms. And hey, this chat room, man, I'll tell you what, you can learn all kinds of stuff. Oh, I went back to um, realliberty.org and got got started trying to give them a little support over there every day. Yeah, I see you posted yeah. over there. So, well, you know, being as it's there and the world is falling apart, we should uh, support the people we know. Because yeah. you know, I'm looking for answers about what's going on in life, and I don't want to not trust my source, so I right. trust you. I trust that source. Well, maybe I'll throw a little. A lot of sources there. That's a called conglomerate of sources, just like mm -hmm. anywhere. Same as the chat room. There's a bunch of sources. Yeah. Well, it's some people are full people. of shit, and some yeah. aren't. Right. <laughs> so, this is true. And well, I value an opinion of some people over another. Uh, yeah. I must be a racist. And you learn over time which ones are worth listening to and which ones are. <laughs> Ignoring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get ignored. Yeah, not, yeah. not a problem. No. I think if, if people don't ignore you on the internet, you're not doing anything. You're just <laughs> yeah. being there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anybody with basic electric knowledge thinks that I'm full of soup. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, you got yeah, that. If you're straight. not pissing somebody off, you're not doing anything. That's it. Yeah. But and then comes the ultimate e insult. Show me a link. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you know, somebody doesn't Jesus know what you're, of course you're racist. <laughs> when we don't believe you, we say, "Show me a link, you talker, you armchair quarterback." The reason that there are no links at present is yeah, I know that because it's too dangerous. Yeah, that's the problem I'm seeing, Larry, on your coral is. I mean, you're talking about a uh, a very anything. Uh, it's got so weapon. many uses you can't can't even write them down. Absolutely, anything that can be done electrically, electronically, or anything that needs power can use our coils to do it. You don't need all this other garbage that's going to put odd harmonics into your systems. It, it goes back to the power plant again. Each different facility on that circuit adds more garbage to the line. So in your test facilities, in your, in your test table, if you use the ground system from your house, you're not going to get accurate results. And your tuning is going to be off because you cannot tune things harmonically when you're using a bad ground. That's why they have to have isolated grounds on these test tables. Yeah. All a matter of cleaning your power before you try to introduce it. Right. But as Rob has learned, there's a big difference between the spoken word, you know, and then the written word. You see it on paper. And some pictures, yeah. and all of a sudden, yeah. oh, whatever yeah. part of your brain works cool. on that Every level, picks that up. A picture being better. worth a thousand words. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I've heard your tone change when you get the picture in your head. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. But I don't get the that. Goes I, I know the bells. Yeah, I know what you're talking about to a level, and then it ends, and then but you go beyond it and go oh. So I I know by the the sound I'm not catching the picture. Yeah. But this is a start. I mean, it's not that bad. I'm not in a place where I'll I'll need to worry about upgrading anything soon. And uh, a lot of people in, in America are in that position right about now. Yeah. So you should you should be very successful with your concept. The sad thing is that all the poor people are going to not have none of it. <laughs> yeah. This is only going to be a, a supply and demand kind of thing. Yeah, speaking of supply and demand, I've, I've been thinking about, you know, the hardest thing about these coils is building the coils. Um, it's a very long, tedious, drawn-out work of art, as, as you said. Well, uh, let's let's go over cost on these things. Uh, the 1,500 milliamp laminated iron core that I got was a hundred and five dollars. Okay, that's a pretty darn ready to go coil that you bought. No, that was just the iron core for a for a coil. Oh, and, and I wrapped it with three dollars worth of wire, and it gave me fifteen hundred milliamps. Well, I put that same three dollars worth of wire. On an eight-inch coil, which it was, it was an eight-inch toroidal uh, ferrite core, and I put that same on an air core, and it gives me thirty amps. You can switch it as fast as you want. It does not saturate and limit the ability of the coil. It does not overheat. There's there's so many pluses to it. Uh, so you got three dollars worth of worth of wire, whatever you pay for your air cord donut, uh, it's another ten bucks, uh, or is it, let's say twenty bucks. So that's twenty three dollars, and you're done. Yeah. So the the cost of things is going to go down. Yeah. Plus you can use ten wire sizes smaller and get the same amperage output. Right. Well, I'm going more to the actual physical building of the coils, uh, and we've we've had a conversation about that a little bit before. And uh, you know, you said you'd even talk to some people, some manufacturers, or people about ways of uh, uh, automating the winding of these coils and things like that. Yeah, uh, that. We tried to get somebody to help us make a machine. Yeah. It's going to take a mechanical engineer that can make a five-axis uh, machine because right. you've, got, you've got to twist the, the donut and put the bobbin of wire through the, the center and receive it on the other side. Right. Uh, and the programmer that we talked to, that could be done for about $120,000. The programmer that we talked to said the program for that would be about $400,000. So we can't afford to do that. So we're still doing it by hand. But our, our 3D printer guy in the, in the R&D department has put a ridge on the donuts, mm -hmm. so that all you got to do is follow that ridge to start with, and all the rest of your wire yeah. lays in right where it's supposed to go. Yeah. He's got one style that's slotted, so you just, and that's where the wires are stacked instead of being horizontal, they're vertical. Oh. And yeah, that one is really easy to wire, and he's got spots built into that where you can push it down and make it even all the way around. Uh, and inspection ports. Uh, so, I not even thought of that, but yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Yeah, the three D printing guy that we've got is a genius. Yeah, yeah, you lucky dog. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's really good. We okay, we so, so uh, let me stop you there. I'm sorry. Um, okay. 
Normally, you're, you're using uh, what you call the, uh, uh, a bobbin. Yeah. Okay, and you're just running the wire through the hole, out and around, through the hole, out and around, you know. Yeah. What if you printed a donut that had a slice cut out of it that was is slightly bigger than a wire? Uh, that's what he did for the vertical wrapping. Yeah, I understand. You did put a groove in it, but I'm talking about a, an actual slice through the whole donut, one side of it. Just a 16th of an inch wide, just a gap. So that you don't have an actual complete donut, uh, the plastic well, donut itself. But it's not that, such a wide gap that it would that it would change the course of the wire. That gap would have to be between each pair of circuits, and it wouldn't hold together. You'd have to have if for a six circuit core, you'd have to have three gaps. Hmm. And for a twelve circuit core, it takes six gaps. Oh, uh, yeah, because of the wire. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, because if you didn't, you if you just wrap, kept going through that same that, one gap, that loop. yeah, oh yeah, never mind. if you kept going through that same never one mind. gap, the wire would overlap. Yeah, never mind. That, Good idea, though. That wouldn't work. Yeah, once you get one wrap around it, that defeats the purpose. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of a way to automate this thing. Like you said, it's just going to take. Well, once once Graham, our our three D printing guy, gets all of the designs that that we're making now, uh, he's already got them and made them. Uh, but once he gets the programs where we can provide the programs to everybody, mm -hmm. they're going to be easy to wind. Uh, the only well, yeah. the most difficult one to wind is the is my original design 12 circuit coil that everything is flat going everywhere. Mm -hmm. We've got one that starts flat on the outside equator and as it curves around toward the inside of the donut, it also twists so that that wire is horizontal on the outside and vertical as it goes through the center. Huh. Yeah, that's that's a rocket ship coil. That's a levitation coil. Okay. Also, it's a it's an electric furnace coil. That one will have a super high magnetic field inside the vortex, in the, in the middle of the hole of the donut. Yeah. And I don't say bagel ever because a bagel hole is not round. <laughs> uh, uh, well, then what is it? It's just a hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I guess. I, I don't know how to interpret that one. <laughs> That's something else. These things are, in my mind, and I haven't got a way to prove it yet, but in my mind, they're creating a very tiny black hole. And one side of a black hole sucks things in, and the other side of a black hole forces it out. So we will get a linear, monopolar magnetic field coming out of some of these coils. And it helps to have been married two or three times to really understand that definition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm coming or going. <laughs> All I want is half of everything you've ever made. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> you, you figure that one out. Aye, aye, aye. The trick to life is to not take it too serious. Right. That's right. The minute I get serious, so. you gotta be happy. Mm. 
Maybe they could ride along. <laughs> that had it help. A <laughs> new yeah, law. I don't think it's a happiness that. law. I'm glad you ride along. <laughs> they already did. They've lodged you right into the Stone Age. Yeah, there's Man. already more we're, laws than one person could ever read in a lifetime. We're lucky we're together on the RLM radio right now. Yeah. Telling you. Yep. Okay, so remember... Crabs walk sideways and lobsters walk straight, so you can't take a crab for your mate. Um, okay. Trini Lopez. I have no idea. But it it's probably true. <laughs> I don't doubt things that I can't see. I doubt things I hear sometimes. But yeah. If I get a visual in my head, it's unusual. Oh, my. The wife is showing off. Uh, oh, sir, had to go to work. No. Uh, yeah, yes, yesterday. Yeah. You mean you should get up and get on the thing and go down to the... Yeah, actually show up. And they decided... The thing and all that. that. Yeah. Well, there's times they got to do their secret shit and private. Uh, the internet's uh, just not really the... It's a privacy tool, but there's always ways around ways. 5G. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's why you do things in person, so you can have total secrecy. It's the only way you can. Because anything that goes on the net, somebody could find it. They knew how to look for stuff. So, nah. Privacy crap's a bunch of nonsense. There's no privacy on the net. See? And they're worried about privacy in public and standing six feet apart. Yeah, and then they can post their whole life story on Facebook. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. I, I shut Facebook down a few years ago. Yeah. I'm not one of those people that I don't I don't care about big crowds enough to bother with it. Yeah. I like small inner circles that I can jump in and out of. See, like you and Larry are my gateway to the electronic world because I know you guys. So if I have electronic questions, guess who I'm going to ask? Larry. Now, if, mm. I got, <laughs> if I got computer troubles and I need, you know, somebody that's willing to, to be patient with me, I go to Grim. Yeah. So, every, you know, everybody that I associate with, we do something for each other. It's not just yeah. a stand-up of words. Yeah. Nah, well, that's the whole point, man. you got to work with other people to get things done. And admitting that in the first place is a big step forward. <laughs> Isolation is its a lifestyle if you can afford it. If you've ever read any Robert Kiyosaki books, mm -mm. well, his big thing is it's all about assembling the right team. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Surrounding yourself with the right people. People that surround know. yourself with people that know more than you do. About yeah, there you go. And that's the key. Nobody's standing up on top of the table. Hey, look at me. <laughs> well, from a business perspective, which is what he was teaching, um, you, you have your specialist. You have the right person for the job. Yep. And so, in a business perspective, you. You get a good accountant, you get a good business lawyer, you get a good business manager, you get an acquisitions officer, you get a finance, you know, all the positions. That's how you build a successful business. Okay, and I think that the government is dead set against other people coming into their shit, so they, they stop you legally first, so oh, you yeah. can't get started. Oh, yeah, they, and, put, they put up uh, hurdles. Oh, yeah. They're, they're too uh, cost-intensive for the little guy to manage. It's nothing for mm -hmm. a big corporation, though. they got full-time paid lawyers to handle all that shit. Yeah, but the government has the IRS to deal with the corporations when they don't pay. Yeah. They did it too yeah, well. If you don't what pay along, the then, yeah, you get the audits. And the, and yeah, Gibson that. just fucked them over really good. Armed, armed 50 armed... Yeah, uh, agents was, going in with cars and arresting them. Just horrible. Yeah, that was a crime. So, over, that was a crime. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that was years ago for uh, yeah. 
They were they were using a wood that was it had nothing to do with that. Well, I thought it was about the connections of who they were politically supporting, but papers, you know, yeah. information was exactly. that this, that, and the other. They used that excuse. Come on, Rob, you know me. I don't believe any of these same thing. Just in, but in I, different I do. <laughs> you got to repeat the story the way it was told, yeah. regardless of the truth or not, because otherwise nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about anymore. Well, I'm used this, to that. This <laughs> stuff has been so just delivered with such flamboyant lies that yeah. work yeah. well. Oh, please. And here you got a coil. You can't explain it to people in a way that's simple. So you lose a lot of audience because of that. You know, because we're basically not very intelligent. That's why I think we need other people. The more people you're around, you know, to a point, like eight or ten, the IQ well, goes up a bit. Yeah. Well, it's, it's impossible for the average person to <laughs> know all there is to know or that they need to know to, to put together a thing. Like, oh, they yeah, need. they don't have the tools necessary they to build. They don't have everything they need. And even if they did have all the knowledge and expertise and capacity to do it, they don't have mm. the time. Mm. You know, one person can't do it all. Wow. Well, so, Cirque was trying to get me to do something here at the house in the backyard. I didn't want to do it. So her mother and her, and her sister said, so fuck it, we can do this. We don't need him to do it. And they did it. <laughs> and they weren't being nasty or mean. or They just were showing Cirque, you know, you're, you're giving him too much power. Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of a compliment. So, you know, it took the three of them to make a decision that was good for everybody. Yeah. So, and, well, that's, I mean, I live in a good life where people, they're reasonable. You know, and if I say no to something, it's not the end of life. You know, it's so the old man don't want to do it. Well, then we'll do it. And I think that's kind of a, like a cornerstone to success, you know, to be honest with other people about what you're willing and not willing to do makes a big right. difference. Right, yeah. Uh, I'm getting philosophical, but, you know, all these, well, all these things that you guys talk about, the reason I'm interested is because I, I think I'm smart enough to hear what you're saying. <laughs> so my ego is running them up. Well, it's all connected to you. But I don't need to understand the details to use the computer either. Right. You know? So well, yeah, possibilities. Yeah, that's, what I'm saying. that's what I'm saying. I'm, I can't wait for the catalog to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I can hear it in the tone. And it would be useless to me because I wouldn't understand enough of it to, to make anything. But the catalog would be end user uh, products like uh, Larry. Like right. You said the first product you're going to be coming out with is these speakers. Yeah. And I would definitely uh, love to be <laughs> uh, the first customer or whatever. Once once you get your coil built, go and buy a cheap breadboard and tear that piece of shit apart. Take the copper plate out of it, attach it to your coil, and there's your speaker. Uh -huh. You can't blow it out, no matter how low or how high you put the pitch, you're done. You can, you can put a cone on it to give it direction, but if you don't, it's an omnidirectional speaker. Just like they use in a movie theater. Uh -huh. the, the speakers that they use in the theater, they put four by eight sheets of plywood up on the wall and screw a magnet into the center of it and use that whole piece of plywood as a resonator for it. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yep. A great, big, huge, heavy magnet with a coil around it. You're done. The things you don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. It comes from designing them and wearing them. I had a really good work life. I got to design the projects and physically work on the projects. Yeah. And boy, howdy, was that fun. 
I yeah, do, I can bend pipe and pull wire with the best of them. Yeah, you get to see your designs get built and come into fruition. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I I punched down a, a whole computer system for well, Sprint was one of my projects. The eight building Sprint complex here in Lamexa, Kansas. I designed a communication system for that for Sprint and interlocked every one of their workstations, sent them all back to a central building, and punched down every single one of those thousands and thousands of wires onto the patch board. Damn. Oh, it, it, it's just, it's fun. That's a lot of work. I've done some punch down. Yeah? So, yeah, I've, I've wired phone systems. Can't be colorblind. No. <laughs> so yeah. nerds just want to have fun. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's 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 never that's saw that coming. Nerd porn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Shawberger was one of my heroes. Anything that you can do with water that Shawberger did with water, you can do with a magnetic field. And once I realized that, boom, my whole world opened up. Hey, Larry, did you have a specific uh, Monday meeting comment for the week? Uh, yeah, the more you've got circuits that don't read at all, that there's no power output. You can grab both of the ends of the wire and it won't shock you, but yet you can put a load on it and it will power the load and it asks for more load as you go. That's the comment. That's what that's what they finally understood last week when they put it into practical application. Yeah, that usually helps. Output yep. increases with load. Down. Yeah. Yep. And it goes against what it's supposed to do. It goes oh, yeah. against all the normal rules. Against all of them. It's exactly backwards. Yeah. Wow. If, if you can put a meter on it and it doesn't show anything, then you can't get anything out of it. Well, don't believe that shit. Try to put a load on it and find out what it does. Yeah. Uh, so you've been misled one more time. Absolutely. Many, science world. I wonder how many missed uh, advances or breakthroughs have been missed. Just because people didn't even think to try something like stick a load on a couple of wires, or they were re they were repelled from the idea. No, yeah. don't do that. It no. will kill you. That won't the work. The idea just never occurs yeah. because that just that don't work. That doesn't work. You don't. Right. You know, you don't plug one ten into a two hundred and twenty socket. My dad's big thing was not telling me that it didn't work. He said, "Try it and find out." Yeah. Which most parents don't tell their kids that. that, that, that <laughs> kids try all kinds of crazy shit, man. <laughs> we, we built a magnetic motor when I was like 12. Yeah. A uh, couple of iron nails and, and some copper wire and two big horseshoe magnets. And that just spun and spun and spun. And we lit up a 12 watt or 12 volt light bulb for about a year and a half on the workbench before we finally took it down. Wow. So you grew up knowing this shit works. I, I grew up knowing that if you don't try it, you're never going to find out. Yeah, yeah. You don't try I it, built an inverted know. solar furnace at 14 out of a parabolic mirror, one-way mirrors, a concave prism that lets out the... the yellow end of the spectrum, which is the hottest, and the magnifying lens, just like Aristotle did in 54 B.C. Uh -huh. And I burned the bottom board off of Dad's backyard fence, and he got pissed off. <laughs> I had to, had to mow lawns until I could save up enough money to, to buy a new board and put on that fence. But he never told me that I couldn't do it. He didn't ever tell me that it wouldn't work. Yeah, and the the MythBusters yeah. guys on TV, yeah. they tried it and didn't do it right, 
and so they say, well, that never worked. Mm. But but if if an old Greek could burn down a Roman fleet at the flight of an arrow, then let's try it. <laughs> right. The do not sit on the grass sign has been instilled <laughs> in us. Yeah. What the hell else do you do with grass? Lay down. I on sit it. on it. You just don't walk on it. Yeah. No, they let you walk on it. You can't sit, on, or they don't let you walk on it anymore either. <laughs> uh, freedom, baby. I want the grass. Our freedom. Oh wait, no, that's the beach. You can walk on the beach, but don't sit. That's that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. water. Uh, uh, don't get in the water. It don't, gets the don't, shark. Don't, don't, don't bring your lawn chair and sit on the beach. Just that, you can walk that's on because the beach. You can't sit that, on it. That's because getting that salt water up your nose will cure the COVID <laughs> virus. <laughs> right? Yeah. The truth hurts. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, more in intellectual stuff to come. No? Help, help. Huh? Are we in intermission? Yeah. More to come. I know. I'm, 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 uh, I'm a little short on ideas today. I've been... Preoccupied with the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah. <laughs> so more ah, preoccupied with my own little world, but yeah, same thing. Okay. Let's get a fishing report. Fishing report yeah. was eight to three. Eight to uh, three. Eight to three. We kept five bass that weighed a little bit over 20 pounds. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and like I think we kept three bluegill that were huge bluegill that bit on our very smallest bait. Uh huh. So that was fun. Yeah. How long were you out? About four hours. What? So you actually had to put your beer down three times an hour? Well, wow, that feels like a lot of work. <laughs> I don't drink anymore because you wouldn't like me if I was drinking. <laughs> okay, I'll take your word for it, but yeah, I just always just thought everybody that fish drank when they did it. I thought it was like a rule. When when I did drink, I wouldn't bait my hook <laughs> because okay. I didn't want to be interrupted. Oh, okay, <laughs> oh. I'm a hardcore alky. If I have one oh. sip of beer, I have to get drunk. Oh, that's no fun. Man. Yeah. Okay, sorry I brought it up. I just assume. ain't no deal. I haven't had a drink since I was thirty-five, and I'm seventy-two now. Wow, you are an old fucker, aren't you? Yeah, I'm nine. Damn, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got the same. I've got that same mental problem where I look at my age, but I don't think my age. I think like this. I've always thought. Yeah, yeah, and that freaks me out because I don't know where that fourteen-year-old kid went. Well, yeah, it's just the outside changed. Yeah. And I guess some people change with their outside to fit in in this society so you don't seem like you're an old codger trying to be 30. I'm just a 30-year-old that looks like an old codger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I finally cut my long hair off just so that people wouldn't look at me weird. But, oh, yeah, I'm worried about that someday, too. But I don't care yet. Oh. Yeah, I got a head full of hair, too. I prefer long hair. Yeah, yeah my wife said if I cut mine, she's cutting hers. Ah, I like her hair. She's got a lot. Nice, big old, oh. brown head of hair. Oh, don't I it. think. Yeah, I think it's like an antenna to people. Yes, it is. It tunes us into shit that other people think we're crazy for seeing, but we see it. There's actual science behind that. Or, is there really? Or the real anecdote, anyway. There's a story about uh, the old Indian guys back in the old days. They, uh, the, the army used them yep. as scouts. Yep. And they brought them into the army and cut, made them cut their hair. And they went out and they weren't worth the shit. They couldn't, they couldn't track or find anything. Hair is part of your sensory equipment. 
Yeah, and then they let them grow their hair out, and then they actually made a rule. You can look it up. Matter of fact, I'll look it up right now. Hey, Larry, do you think that you can control your personal vibration by mental, you know, thinking? Or is that just a crazy thought? No, that's an absolute fact. If, if you can try it out, if you get a bunch of bottles of water and freeze them, but one bottle, you put a label on it that says, I love you, and think that you love that water, and the next bottle of water, put a label on it that says, I hate you, and hate that bottle of water. They'll come up with two different forms of crystals. That's a proven fact. Yeah, and that's your vibration. Water holds frequency. So you're putting your frequency into your thought frequency into that bottle of water. Yeah. You're just an electrical machine. There's the Japanese guy that did experiment with all that. Yeah. Yeah, you're just a machine. He had several different uh, jugs of water with different labels on them in a public place and people would walk by and see them just, you know, he would have different labels like love, hate, jealous, uh, you know, peace, harmony, blah, blah, blah. And all the ones with the hate and jealousy would be all mangled looking and under a microscope. That's another thing about these coils. Uh, if you've got the proper ratio, the 2 3 8 ratio, the coil will create a vortex when you put a, a bucket of water over the top of it and let it freeze. There'll be a spiral of air bubbles in it, just like a tornado. Huh. Interesting. See, the, the experiment. Powered or unpowered? Yeah. Unpowered. Yeah. Like Larry says, though, I did my experimenting in different areas. Yeah. Yeah. Of life. Yeah. But to have a, uh, what do you call it, an interest, I would suppose, in what you guys are talking about, that's kind of unusual. I've always been fascinated in anything to do with science. Me too. I have the, I have the luck of running into people with a curiosity, though. In physics. Yeah, yeah I like weird. physics because yeah. I want to know why. And yeah. physics will tell you why yeah, in a lot of cases. I yeah, find physics is full of soup. There's a lot of guys out there like you. Yeah. Mostly, I don't very often speak to women that have any interest in electrical. That doesn't come up. <clears throat> the closest to that would have been my husband's an electrician. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's the closest I've been to a conversation. I, I worked with one lady electrician in my whole career, but she wow. was really sharp. <laughs> See, yeah. Well, it is kind of like a, a men-dominated business in the first place. Well, what woman wants to bend pipe and pull wire all day? A strange one, but they're out there. Well, yeah. There's yeah. probably a lot more that got refused. Same kind that want to lay brick or... Because yeah. when you start at something, there's always a Work on an old yeah. rig or... The gender split thing works against them. Or dig a bitch. Yeah. Run it. Uh, I've met nah, women, uh, women that could out dig me with a shovel, out saw me with an axe. You, you name it. Yeah. And then I've met women that wouldn't get up because their finger paint wasn't dry. <laughs> so you're trying to saw with an axe, you're doing it wrong. Don't yeah, but my hair. <laughs> our gender is just more. Uh, we're oh, built for it. There and rub it back and forth. That just doesn't work very well at all. You're going to be a long time cutting that log. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> We're using, using fingernail clippers. Uh, just jacking with your hand. Tree down with a pair of fingernail clippers. Yeah. And a book of matches. You got pet beaver. Yeah, I remember the first time I, I set a fire with my glasses to show oh, some yeah. children. Well... They wanted to know. They yeah. asked me. I went, yeah, very possible. But if you do it, you're going to get in trouble. But I'll show you how it works. Because <laughs> when you tell you when, you, I was, <laughs> when I was a kid and people would tell me yeah or no, but no explanation, I'd just go try it. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. If they don't want to show me, I'll do it myself. 
Yep. Luckily, I didn't blow myself to smithereens. I had a chemistry set when I was young that had enough chemicals in it I could make nitroglycerin. Mm -hmm. I could make uh, aluminum aluminum dioxide. Uh, wow. Yeah, I, it was really fun. Yeah. And in those days, you could walk into any pharmacy, and if you could say the word, they would sell you that chemical. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's Oh, yeah, before all this legal, sh yeah. legal shit came up. Yeah. Now we just pay for lawyers and get 10% yeah. of what we pay for. There used to be a radio shack on every corner, and anybody, you know, people knew how to build a crystal radio. And, yeah, I know, built a crystal like radio when I was young. People don't even know what a resistor is these days. No. I'm one of those people. Or, or, I've know. got, see, I've got friends like you that do. And I have the ability to ask questions. I always never have trouble meeting people that I need to help me do something because I ask if they do it. I it's learned not hard. I learned the resistor color code by a little word game. Yeah. Bad wow. boys rape other young girls, but Violet gives willingly. I. <laughs> you dirty, dirty old <laughs> 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 and can I can I ask you a few real questions though about controlling my frequency? Yeah. Okay, because I I thought I thought this was all this time I'm I'm going along listening to it and I'm thinking these are outside forces that control me. And then right. I start listening to the show. You know, I listen to you guys talk about, it, and I've come to the idea that well maybe there's a way I can control them. Mm -hmm. But just like religion, if you don't believe the shit you're, you're saying out loud, then you don't. You're just talking. So I'm not on the religious level of belief, so to speak, with frequency yet. I'm just dabbling in the shallow end to see what I want to do. Well, okay. When when you're happy, you feel good. When you're happy, your happy attitude transfers to other people. When you're sad, your sad attitude transfers to other people. Right? True. Yeah. That's your frequencies, interacting with other frequencies. Some but of them are harmonious and some of them are discord. Oh, okay. So that's what I was going to say. So the people that aren't on the same level you're on aren't going to be bothered with it one way or the other. So you're yeah. only seeking your own level, so to speak. No, you can change a sad person into a happy person. Tell them jokes oh, yeah, and yeah. cartoons. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. But how does that change my frequency if I'm, say, my wife comes home from work in an un unhappy mood? I know what to do. But how does that, wow, I thought that was just her. Tell her you love her, put your arms around her, and give her some yeah. of your energy. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up, yeah. Oh. doesn't go any further than that. Wow. But see, it's looking at the words, I think, that confuse, that lead me to the confusion that I got. Because I'm seeing the world out, you know, out of my perspective. And I believe what I see is all what I see. So, but I don't think it's what everybody else sees. I'm not... Yeah, I, there, I, I don't, don't see the world that. the same way. But... I, we see the same things, but we interpret them differently. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I look at the ancient Egyptian stuff or the ancient Anunnaki stuff, I don't see religious symbols. I see machines. I see power supplies and generators and proton accelerators and plasma generators. The stick figures on the caves with a ring under their arms... Those are plasma generators. That's not a stick figure. That is an electric machine that generates electricity out of rotation and a spark gap. With a toroidal coil, that that the two circuits under uh, circles under their arms are representing the toroidal coil that's in the center that picks up the charge. Oh, boy, everybody went quiet on that one. 
I'm well, <laughs> some of it's a little beyond me. Yeah. But I was asking a question anyway, so I was waiting for you. And the, the three spirals that they've got linked together, the two outside spirals are clockwise, the inside spiral is counterclockwise. That's three pancake coils interacting with one another. Hmm. But to the layman, that's toast. <laughs> yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make is I, I understand that the crowd, what we do get, understands you clearly. And the rest of us don't have the chance to learn how to. So, hmm. it's a weird topic, this electric shit, because it brings up everything else in life into it without being specific. Right. Once again, everything has the three basic components. Vibration, which causes electricity, which causes magnetism. That's the Holy Trinity. Everything from a photon to the entire universe has those three properties. All right, so when you're thinking stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and let's say you're in a big group. Let's, let's say you're in a smaller big group. Let's give them a name. What do you call them? Israel, <laughs> for example. Uh, how how does a group that small get a wavelength so strong going that the world just buckles to it and does whatever it says? They have all the money. Okay, well, where does the frequency and wavelength come into play in this kind of a situation? Because they do have uh, support from the public. People believe their stories. If you tell the same lie over and over and right. over, right. it's well, going to be I, believed. Well, right. But I understand all that. Rob, and you understand all that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that listen and don't listen to us that understand that. The problem is they're not getting together and bonding and joining sides and all that kind of shit. It's time to um, make these things work that we're thinking about doing. Because they're possible. You've proven they're possible. That was the biggest hurdle. Okay, now the biggest, the big step over all of this is getting around this fucking controlling government that wants us all to be on the mother tit of oil until we're dead. And they'll do anything to keep us on it. Yep. They're that doing it now. I know it's, uh, you guys didn't bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up. Unless you don't want me to. Then I won't. Go for it. Well, it seems to me that the United States of America is uh, being burnt from the inside out yep. by enemy agents that are claiming to be part of a problem that they started. And they, they're, you know, this thing is bad. So there's your wavelength. Mm -hmm. They made it angry. They made it fearful. And everybody got sucked into it somehow or another. But it was instigated by people that weren't from the neighborhoods that the shit starts in. Right. Zero Democrats voted for the abolition of slavery. <laughs> the Democrats established the Ku Klux Klan. Right, but um, they changed, the parties changed names over time, wasn't it? Yeah, over time, yeah. They swap. Well, that's kind of misleading, isn't it? <laughs> not, not to let everybody know the truth. Well, they had newspapers in those days. Yeah. They could do whatever they want. They controlled the newspapers back then. Most of the yeah. policy, as they still do now. Where does frequency come in? I don't, you know, where do you get all these people agreeing with things just because they were told or they read it? And whether it's true or not doesn't matter. They read it or they heard it. You've been indoctrinated from the time you were a baby by the TV and the subliminal messages on the TV, by what you were taught in school that was government program teaching, programming. Yep, we've all been programmed. Yep. Okay, so again, this does come under the control of the frequencies, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so if they're emitting a frequency, what am I doing for myself to reject it? Because I'm not... You're doing that now. 
You're yeah, doing just it knowing now. it, right? Just knowing it exists and is all you need. Just knowing it and not believing in it changes okay. the yeah. frequency of their output. Yeah, yeah, because there's people that, that smoke a lot. That's oh, yeah. something else about your test tables. If you're touching that thing when you're testing it, it's not going to read the same as if you're t if you're not touching it. Uh, test table. What do you, I don't know. Whatever it may be. Oh. Go ahead. Whatever you're test talking. Test table. It, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what a test table is. That's all. Oh, okay. Uh, your workbench. Where you're, oh, doing, where oh, you're oh, doing your experimentation. See, that, that's okay. That's, uh, how that's something else. Your 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 workbench cannot be made out of anything that's conductive, because that will change the capacitance of your circuits. So, what do you recommend? Wood, with no with no screws in it, all glued together, wood pegged together, however dovetailed together. Strap. No, you can't strap oh, it with can't strap it. It. Yeah, no metal. Uh, well, no you metal. can use uh, and, strapping. And something else, don't have that next to the walls in your building that have metal screws in them or nails in them because the induction from your coils will make those heat up and you might burn down your building. Jeez. Uh, okay, and this is called what? Say that name again. Induction. No, the table name? Uh, just your workbench. Oh, okay. So that works in any language. I was, yeah. Uh, there was an yeah. electronic guy word for it. Oh, uh, it, it, test table is what I call it, but it's a workbench. Well, that'll work. Bench, workbench, uh, test table, work table. Yeah. The where where are you doing do your work? experiment? Yep. Building your workbench. Ta -ta -ta -ta. I compromise when I can't make a decision. Dust, is it time for you to build a coil flash? Well, it probably is, but I'm not that, um, I'm not that, what's the right word, dependable for a job of this kind of length and, and magnitude. That's what I'm finding out. Um, you know, I don't like to start something that, I'm not prepared to drag out till the end of my days. Yeah. It's very so, tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I easy. appreciate it, but, you know. And it's also easier if you have two people doing the same one. Yeah. As a, yeah. You know, helping yeah. to hold the wire and keep it straight and put the glue on it and et, et cetera, et cetera. That's yeah. something else. One guy holding the wire, one guy squirting glue. Yeah. If if you use a glue gun, that's inorganic glue. That's going to dope the wire with something that's inorganic, which will again change the properties a little bit. Mm -hmm. Your glue, whatever you're using to secure the wire onto the donut, needs to be organic, living, something from nature. Not something man-made out of chemicals. Wow. You know, it sounds like you're defining perfection. The end result yeah. of the spoil is perfect, right? Yeah. Okay, but I'm gonna t I'm throwing at you my, my upbringing that comes to mind, right? Okay. And I was thinking of things like, uh, wow, it sounds good. You know, all the cliches that I was brought up to say came to mind in Flash. Just... You know, reminding you that I'm just as human as you are. Yeah, because my my job here is to doubt. If there's any doubt to find. I'm looking for it, oh. and the, the more involved I get into this, the less doubt I got. <laughs> so, hmm. But the the I know how to ask the questions anyway. But I don't feel them like I did when I started. Because yeah, c controlling your frequencies is it's thinking. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Well, I did, but I didn't understand that. So to oh. have it put back to me in that fashion made it simple. Thanks. When, when you're building a coil, when you're wrapping a coil, you are concentrating on that coil, and it's so intensive 
that you can't think of anything else. You can be interrupted, yeah, but then you stop building the coil and do something else. But while you're doing it, it's labor intensive. It's something you have to focus on to do, yeah. and that provides the intent into that coil. I'm not saying that, that you've got to have the intent in the, before to work. But I'm it helps. Saying it, but it helps, yeah. Uh, yeah, all the positive you can gather is better than two negatives. Yeah. You can't have yeah. somebody sitting there helping you that says, God, I wish I was someplace else fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And that would be me, probably. You know, I'd rather be kinda, uh, I've thing. been uh, kind of on hold. Because uh, you, you just got to be in the right mindset to do this. Yeah. You've got to want to do it. Yeah. Because it's, it's tedious. It's hard work. Uh, it, it's not hard physically, but it's hard mentally. Yeah, it's it's uh, meticulous. Yeah. yeah. There you go. But there's other things that require that kind of patience I like to do. Yeah. And then there's, yeah, that's it. My My interests are just limited. Yeah. And I don't mind I don't mind being stuck on, you know, where I'm at in life. It doesn't bother me. It bothers other people I'm not open to new shit. But yeah. if I haven't yeah. done it by now, I'm done I'm done. I'm done looking. I'm resistant to change. Major resistant to change. Yeah. But this I, stuff fascinates me so much that I just want to do it all the time. And it's constantly changing. Yeah. But it, uh, it doesn't. It's more like, to me, what I'm seeing is, is you're discovering what you didn't know the day before. That's right. Oh, look what I found. Not, oh, dig me. I'm so smart. Oh, look what I made. I'm Larry. Watch oh, this. Boy. It's more like, well, I'm hearing you tell me I, you discovered a buried uh, secret. And you put it to practical use with the knowledge you have at the time you're at. With the tools available. And this has got legs. Someday, someday this will matter in the history. But right now, people are doing other shit. They're not really interested. Yeah. They're going to be. They're going to be glad they know you someday. <laughs> it, it's too easy to go to the gas station. Yeah, well, not anymore. It's not getting really right. difficult now. They pulled the plug on oil back, what, three months ago, sir? February or something. It was like negative 35 a barrel. So... They killed the oil market, and then they came up with the COVID, and then after that was uh, uh, the other thing. <laughs> they got a plan. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, but that's what worries me. They got a plan. Yeah. Well, I know that. I didn't know. That. I wish I'd have known what, what I know today. I had no fucking clue. Not to this level of reality. I thought maybe someday, but not like this. Look, think about it. You can have a refrigerator or a freezer that you don't plug in. It runs by itself for over a hundred years. See, and it's such a, a pie-in-the-sky thing. They teach you to not understand these things. Oh, these things God. aren't possible. Here, call your grandfather from your cell phone and tell him to order pizza for dinner. What? Wait a minute. If the other thing isn't possible, but the cell phone is everything's on the cell phone. But they don't uh -huh. see beyond the cell phone. It's my point. Yeah. Well, I, 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 see, I see a ton of people on the cell phone here daily when I go out and oh, yeah. serious yeah. And play. But you know that uh, the automated cash out thing. Yeah. Well, when they had the uh, the lockdown and well, not lockdown, but everybody had to stand apart and all that crap. Social distance in the stores. Well, yeah, the, so I forgot what it was called. Thanks, Rob. But while they uh, while they had that, I guess I lost I lost my train of thought. Now. Ooh. Mm. I went to the store just before the show, and they had the social distancing and the squares marked on the floor where you had to stand, and yeah. then you put your credit card in the machine. <laughs> And everybody uses that same damn machine and touches it. They never clean that off. Right. Well, where I was going with it, Larry, thank you for that, is the, they have the automatic machines. They got three of them in there. 
and nobody was using them. They were lined up at the real human cash people, the card people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do my own checkout. I want to get paid for it. Yeah, because I think a lot of these people know the trap that truly is. Yep. But there, it gets a little traffic, but not very much. Yeah, well, they have the same thing at the at the uh, checkout stand with with the checker. You so so when they it, come into the modern, the modern reader, reader, you got to put your card in. It's the same people yeah. put their card yeah. in before. It's the same shit. I don't I don't get it. They won't. They well, they go through and clean at least more. more. At least here, they go through and clean those self-checkouts every time somebody goes in. There's somebody right behind you. That's the way they are here, anyway. There's somebody right behind I you think, wiping it down. Yeah, I think they got a girl that monitors. I've not paid that much attention, Rob, but, yeah, something like that. But, but still, the people checkouts, here prefer they don't the cat. down between the people on, on the regular checkouts. Those people, the, the, they don't wipe everything down. Between, they don't change gloves. They don't change masks. And who cleans the money? Yeah. I don't know. I don't clean it. I don't touch enough money to make a difference. <laughs> I ain't got enough money to touch. <laughs> I mean, it really. Uh, if I had your money, I'd burn my money. Uh, you know, got a, very, people use, very few people use cash anymore. Everybody's got a debit card or yeah, whatever. Just like the cell phones. See, they yeah. made it. Uh, what do you call it? Convenient. We're a convenient based uh -huh. animal. Uh, yeah. So that's the whole point of liking Larry's damn coil in the first place, Rob. Is I'm I'm lazy and cheap, and I want the easy way out. I don't want to keep yeah. working for these fucking thieves my whole life. Yeah. All of it, really. Give me a break. And we're a throwaway society now, and I'm totally against that. These coils, you can. They're going to have to have a, a frequency modulation system. That's a two dollar and fifty cent plug and play board. Bing. That's that's going to burn out every five or ten years, depending on how much they get beefed up. But how with the economy and crap going on in the world, how can you guarantee a coil price at this point in time and promise the public that they're going to get it? Well, you don't know how much it's going to cost yet because you don't know how much people are going to charge you to wind one of these silly things. Well, that's yeah. what I mean is that, you know... They're so, they're so time-consuming. If you if you get $5 an hour to wind it, you got a $1,000 coil. Hmm. Yeah. No, I was talking about the, uh, the, uh, the thing, the, the modulator. Yeah, the frequency modulation. Yeah, board. yeah. Well, how, how can you guarantee a price? Well, okay. Well, okay. it's going right now. It's going to go up more than likely. Yeah. But okay, I'm just saying, you got to be if honest. If it doubles in price, uh, made, it'll be $5. Yeah. If it quadruples, it'll be 10 Okay, so you're giving us a starting... Well, this, I just want to be clear. Don't, yeah. don't mind me. I hate to be yeah. the devil's no, no, no. that. And, and other than that... If, yeah. if you use a material that won't degradate for your air core coil, your, mm -hmm. your torus, mm -hmm. then that's going to last hundreds of years. The insulation on the wire is going to last hundreds of years. So this requires the honesty of the business guy you're consuming from for once. Yeah. Well, like always. So as long as these people don't get greedy and start figuring, hey, we can get rich if we charge this much for that, like they always do. <laughs> but think about it. These coils can be used in every single thing that's electric. And now that we can can do metal in a subatomic uh, in a molecular range for coils, that means that everything electronic can be replaced with these coils. Wow. Well, well, that's my a other big question: is yeah. miniaturization. How, how do we, how how are you going to build a, a, a two millimeter coil hey, on a three D molecular printing machine? Wow! They've got three D printers that print on a molecular level now. Dump to the down. See, you're done. But we, we've definitely outsmarted ourselves. So, so the greed doesn't come into it at all. But okay. everything that there is that's electric 
can use these coils. So you're going to have an endless market. Yeah. There's enough to so don't around. break it. Don't make it so it'll break. Make it so that it lasts, so that people only have to buy one power supply for them and their yeah. grandkids. Speaking of waste and, and recycling is is something I'm, I'm, I have ideas about. Uh, I, I don't think there should be such thing as a landfill. No, not at all. And, and their big excuse for not having 100% recycling is, is it's cost prohibitive. Because, for, well, whatever the reasons. The coils will change that. The coils will change that because you'll have the energy to take things and sort them. And yeah, the them energy and will be break free. Them back down to their components and, you know, break back and, and pristine trash will be a commodity. Yeah. And with this new Saturn coil, the knife coil, that puts out the the magnetic field like the rings of Saturn, with that coil, you can take that to the miners, and once they crush the ore, you can separate it out according to its atomic weight. Right. Simply through frequency. Nice. So that eliminates all those caustic chemicals that they're dumping into the water supply. And these are all things we could have had a hundred years ago if we could just hadn't been. At least. Uh, I've got an engineering book from yeah, shortly after history. the Civil War that's got more information on it than most school books. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Over and over, all they're doing is giving us something that'll break, something that we have to buy new parts for, programmed in obsolescence. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, landfills suck. There's no I reason see. for them. I mean... Well, and all the big eddy currents in the ocean that's filling up with trash, with plastics and stuff. Yeah. Go out there, collect it, put some UV blocker in it, and build islands with it. Yeah, I've been saying for a long time that that, that giant uh, plastic patch, uh, the giant garbage patch, is is one day going to be. There's going to be a. It's going to be a gold rush. Yeah. To, to the giant garbage patch because that's going to be a source of fuel. Yeah. Or sources. Recently. You can turn that plastic back into oil. Yeah. You can turn that plastic into something that will float if you put a UV blocker in it and make land masses with it. Yeah. It's yeah. All yeah. We, we we went to the trouble of digging up all these these uh, materials, elements, uh, resources turning them into useful products and to just turn around and throw them in, in the, bury them in the ground again. I mean, how much sense does that make? None especially in my all, mind. Especially all the metals. I mean, come on, metals, metals are reusable. And then yeah. insane. Well, we were warned in the 70s that people are doing insane things with insane purposes. And they thought it was entertainment. Yeah, and papers paper shouldn't should never go back in the ground. Paper paper can be remade into paper. Yeah, and replace all that with hemp anyway. Absolutely. Well, that's yeah, but, that's that's yeah. a whole other level. But yeah, another level. Go back 150 years when it was against the law to not to grow hemp. Yeah. <laughs> See, these people are just playing us like idiots, and I'm for one of just. That up with it. And we can get three crops a year out of it where it takes 20 years to grow a pine tree. Hey. Whoa, somebody's got the phone call. <laughs> I suggest you mute, Rob Works. That would not be me. No, it was Larry then. Oh, he muted. Look at that. He did. Yeah, it was me. Yay. All right. No, hey. 
come on. This is this is just for a, a little fun and entertainment and to give some people something to think about. Yeah. You get a you get a phone call on live show. That was fun. <laughs> Hello. Highlight highlight of my night. <laughs> right. Got all excited. And I and I'm almost deaf, that's why the phone rang so loud. <laughs> hey. But man made islands out of trash. You know, yeah. The, the things that you guys think of would never occur to me. Huh. But, okay, the military, the Navy, has what they call tender ships. Those ships go out into the ocean and tend to the other ships. They resupply them and they repair them. Mm -hmm. My dad was on a tender ship that tended submarines. They could literally pick a submarine up out of the water put it in their, their machine shop, refit it with every single part that it had, and all that stuff was on the ship to rebuild it with. The machine shops and foundries and all that were right there on that tender ship. So you can get one of those. They, they've got a, a landing ship that opens up so that you can bring other craft, actually drive them into the ship. Mm -hmm. So get one of those, go out and scoop up the, the plastic, take it to a tender ship or outfit that one ship there, and mm -hmm. reuse it. It's that easy, and I'm sure that you can buy those really cheap. They yeah, but society's kind of busy right now doing other shit. They don't really have time to recycle anything. Yeah, I want to go riot. I want to go and rob a store that yeah. my neighbor owns just You're so that I can have this. Uh, <laughs> what? Freedom! Um, I'm glad oh, I live. Yeah. It's, what is this? The Soviet co co communist hell? <laughs> I think there'll be a Where shortage on bricks. People are just too fucking lazy to get out there and pick it and riot. They don't want to bother. They're too old for all that shit. I know I am. So, yeah, so this whole area is just calm and peaceful. Sorry, guys, no no bad news to report. I got a wrong phone number the other day, two or three days ago, mm -hmm. and the guy says, I'm calling to let you know that I'm about to deliver your bricks. Uh, I'll be there in a half an hour. <laughs> and I said, this is a prank call, right? Uh, one of my buddies. And he said, no, I've, I've got a load of bricks, and I'm going to deliver them to this address on Liberty Street, right on the square in Independence. And... I said, if this is a real call, you've got the wrong number. And he said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And But I thought that was kind of odd. Huh. Yeah. And sure enough, I went down there. It's just not too far away. And there's a load of bricks, and there's no construction anywhere near that. Interesting. Yeah. You know, so let's make a new patio. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my, my wife wants it. But see where I live? You know what? We got everywhere pallets of bricks because all the stuff, all the driveways and sidewalks and everything are all done in brick. Cool. So it wouldn't be strange to see bricks laying around here. I see them every day when I go out somewhere because they're building or changing it or improving. So, hmm. they're not catching on to this crap here in Denmark, these lazy fuckers. Good. <laughs> they, they don't seem to want change. Oh, well. <laughs> My loss. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But, wow, I miss all that. You know, no, I'm take it as it is. Nothing. Yeah, all that target practice. Freedom and making up my mind about how I'm going to live my life stuff. So. No, I don't have to do any of that because the government says I don't have to. <laughs> I can just wander around all I like as long as I don't hurt anyone. Nobody will hurt me, and that's the deal. 
Grim says, so yeah. it's full of bricks for use by people who are dumb as bricks. Ah, uh, come on, Grim. You know, there's people getting paid to do that by other people. This is, and, and, then they, make them and then they add the, the nuts from the lockdown <laughs> for two months <laughs> to the soup that they're they're paying to go in there on top of it all. Oh yeah, and you mix that shit all together and you get what you got. Yep. So anarchy. surprise, <laughs> that's not anarchy. anarchy. No way. No, uh, no, an anarchist is way too lazy to go bother to do shit like that. Murder death. I'm kill. an anarchist, murder and I'm telling kill. you. I'm a Jew anarchist, and I wouldn't pay Pedro to go throw a brick through a window. It's not, Why there's no profit in that. So, nah, I draw the line with certain things here. But my people, my other Jew people don't. They, they don't care. The Anarchist so, Cookbook was one of my favorite books when I was young. Yeah, they black marketed that. You can't even get it legally. I think they made it illegal to get it. I've got it on a hard drive. You lucky you? Yeah, I got a copy of it. You, the, you rebels. See, yeah, and here I am in social. I'd love to have an original uh, first edition. Unarmed, but I'm complaining about my life. Because there's some stuff I, that was in the first edition that didn't get included <laughs> in the rest. He wouldn't let me whine. Okay. No. Well, hey, did you know what Larry told me earlier on no. before the show? He told me that the CARES Act was written a year before the pandemic. Oh, yeah. 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 Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. I the believe The pandemic that. wasn't planned. Bullshit. No, no, they got crystal balls. They know what's going to come. Wow. Crystal. That would hurt when they broke. You crystal. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's I can't fix anything smart this Yeah, you don't want to get kicked. <laughs> wow. Well, what are you guys going to do with all the new uh, plans the government has in store for the country? Same thing I do with all the rest of them. Hmm. Not pay any damn attention to it at all. <laughs> Fuck out of ah, I'm going to keep doing what I do. Yeah. Yeah, nothing going to change me. Ouch. So... Chances are we'll be missing Larry on the show next week. <laughs> if, well, if the state behaves the way I'm reading and seeing on the Internet how it behaves, possibility you might end up uh, in trouble. It's possible. Yeah, the state's not playing games with people. They're being a prick to everybody equally, as far as I can see. Unless I'm wrong. You know, fix me if I'm, if I'm misled. What's going on? Our state isn't quite that severe. Uh, they're not putting anybody in jail for touching somebody in a store. Uh, they're not putting people in jail for opening their business. It's pretty lax here because we don't give a shit. Yeah, same here. We never locked down or any of that. They made recommendations. Yeah. And... Uh, I guess they did uh, order the restaurants to close for like two weeks. Yeah, but yeah. Well, is living in it right now as bad as the internet makes it look? I would have only if, if only it's going to do something. What's going on? Other than yeah. other than the restaurants being closed. Yeah, if, if you're in New York or California where they've got 5G and it's heavily, heavily left wing, then yeah, there's a lot of problem with it. And, and your, your governor is going to put you in jail or your mayor is going to put you in jail. But the normal people, <laughs> it's, it's not affecting them as bad. It's, yeah, we, sort of listen to what they want us to do, but we still just do whatever the hell we want to. Pretty well, much I like got a question else. about the bricks and anarchy that you guys might find interesting. Right. That question would be like this. How does commerce cross anarchy when you're delivering bricks that cost money, right? They're insinuating that there's like this network of anarchists all over the world, and we conspire to do shit, but I think we're too lazy to make our own coffee. 
so I'm confused on how they put the two together and come out with anarchists. It, it's just like the refugee trails from Guatemala. They would have had to walk barefoot or whatever for 45 miles a day to get that far in the time that it took them. So somebody is paying to get them bust, is paying them food. If, you, if you're leaving your country because you don't have enough food to eat, then you sure as hell don't have a cell phone. And all the refugees had cell phones. Uh, the same with the with the yeah, virus attack. Yeah. And the, yeah, and the, the uh, protesters. Yes, peacefully protest. Have a march. Don't march in the damn street. March beside the street. Carry your signs. Show it to the traffic. Don't walk in the middle of the street and get your ass run over here. That was the the lockdown was to fuel, so they yeah. get this kind of result. Yeah. yeah, and they only got that result in the big city where it's so overcrowded already. Locking them down was so unnatural. And and, and in New York, unless it's a violent crime, there is no bail. So you go in, you sign your name to a book, and leave. <laughs> and the other states that there is a bail for it. They're getting paid for by George Soros' Freedom America movement and some of the movie stars. Yeah. Doesn't that oh. tell you something? Yeah. Don't they're they not, all need to be cleaned out. Well, they're not donating money to restore the building that got smashed. No, or not at all. The person that got burned out of their apartment building. <laughs> this is... This reeks of big money and state and cooperation between uh, enforcement. Uh, it's horrible. Man. Yeah. And I can't prove anything I think. I'm just looking at the results and coming up with these nasty ideas. I'm sure yeah. I'm making yeah, a lot of people mad selling stuff like this, but it's, it's just the way I see it. And I'm sure other people have different attitudes. Sure. Yeah. And, and then, of course, then you get the right and wrong thing to go to. Uh, that's all uh, about the perception. I realize that, but my perception is different than yours is because I'm not in it. I'm out watching it. So it's, it's a different kind of perspective, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to be way more critical because I'm seeing all this just bad, bad, bad things happening. I don't know. And I, I'm just going to try to clean this up. One and of I'm my gonna... favorite examples on perspective is a cylinder. At an angle, shine a light, or a, a cylinder, shine a light on one end, and it's a circle. Shine it on the side, and it's a rectangle. You've got to shine it at an angle before the shadow that it presents is a cylinder. So, I guess that's what I get, I'm getting. I'm talking about something completely different than you, Larry, but I'm stuck on this uh, frequency concept. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, if, if they've got all this electronic shit to work with and the internet, cell phones, the system is keeping a frequency going so people will be agitated. That's what 440 is all about, what Hitler did. Yeah. He installed 440 frequency during the, the German thing back in World War II. Right. And that keeps everybody agitated. Hitler was the first one to put fluoride in the water to keep people stupid. <laughs> yeah. And that's something. Uh, they experiment on us, on us like we're lab rats and call it progress. Yeah. And then you guys are sitting on this freaking coil. And they call you the enemy, trying to subvert oil, blah, 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 blah. Bad names, bad names. When we went from the horse and buggy to cars, the Teamsters still worked. They just drove the trucks. We didn't put anybody out of business. Yes, you did. <laughs> you put those whip makers out of business. Well, yeah, where there's a whip, there's a way. Everybody needs a whip. And you put all the harness makers out of business. And the buggy and makers. making shoes. Yeah. And leather coats. When can when light bulbs came out, we put candle makers out of business. 
Saved a lot of bees. Progress is a bitch, man. Yep. You call what's going on progress? I call it control. <laughs> and the people that think they're being free are just being herded in their little shit to do what they're expected to do by the bigger people. Yeah. It's sad to watch. Yippers. So, I'm hoping for a, a frequency or something to get changed so this shit will stop and people will grow up and you know, you can't trust the spoken word very well, but, man, you can do better than this. Well, that, that's what I was talking about with the frequency modulation board in each one of these generators. You're going to have to have something to make it 50 or 60 cycles. 54 cycles will operate both 50 and 60 cycle equipment efficiently. 54 times 8 is 432. If 432 is middle A, 54 is low A. Bow back to the frequency of nature. We need to figure out a way to apply this. That's all. You got the knowledge, you got the ability, and we've got the technology. We just need to get the word out there to people. And sooner or later, that's all you can do, right? We're coming up to the end of the show. I was just throwing my shit. I'm just waiting on them to, uh, to publish and start selling kits. Mm. And actual products. Absolutely. Right. That's right. what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for. I mean, I can build a coil just to prove it works to myself. Yeah. But that's not going to take us where I want to go. <laughs> ah. I be, you yeah. know, yeah. I, and that's another reason I'm kind of, you know, not uh, lighting the fire under. under well, the yeah. It'll just give you something that you need test equipment to figure out what it does. Yeah. And then that's another thing. I, I mean, my table has metal legs. I mean, there's all kinds of things that I need to do to even get ready to even start doing this thing. Um, it spurts. I, I, you can get the bug, do it, then don't do it. I just... Eh. It's uh, taken every penny of my retirement money to get as far as we've gone. I'm yeah, broke now. I bet. And, that one, and that's another reason I hope you guys get something launched here so you can... Do a GoFundMe for Larry Woods on Facebook. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm, dirty. I'm sorry. There you go. Hey. If I, if I can't do it, it don't get done. How the hell do I know unless I speak? Sorry, Larry. I, I didn't mean to say that. I was just being kind of funny. No, I just. I knew. I knew you were. I, see, deep down, I think I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but. Could resist the yeah. chance. I'm, I'm not upset. I just don't want anything like that to ever happen on my behalf. Good. Because it ain't. Because the world's yeah. on fire right now. and People are they're more worried about themselves. This is a future project to the average guy. This ain't going to be on their list of to do tomorrow. They got bigger problems. <laughs> Well, it's nice yeah. to know people that I can talk to that will tell me that they're going to you know, do as they do and see what happens. Yeah. And hope, hopefully everything goes smooth for the both of you, and you'll be back next Thursday. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, I'll be here. <laughs> I've no been fear-mongered for a week and a half on the Internet about how terrible America can be right now. So. Yeah. Hmm. In, oh, in spots, if, governments if are really the bad. Yeah, if you're in L.A., New York, Chicago, Atlanta, yeah, all those hot good. spots, you know, right. Minneapolis, of course. Uh, yeah. You know, any, of the, any city with a population of more than 100,000 probably even might wow. be seeing something. But wow. Everywhere right. else in the country, which is 95% of the country, the actual physical country. Uh, wow. it's a nothing burger. What a plan. Yep. It's only going mm. on in very isolated uh, places. Well, thanks yeah. a lot, Larry, and they are. thanks a lot, Rob. I'm going to yes, sign sir. out here. You guys can carry on, but your last moments. Yeah, have a good night. See you later. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will see you again next week.